Hello, my name is Abraham Klein, and today I'm here with Pastor, now officially Pastor Aaron Rudel. And uh, he and I have known each other a long time, and I've actually never uh, done an interview with him about his testimony and ministry. So uh, right before he leaves for Washington, we're going to do that. So uh, Brother Aaron, how are you doing today? Very good. Very good. Very blessed. Yes, very blessed indeed. Uh, we were actually just at your ordination tonight. Yep. Uh, we had the opportunity to test, hear some testimony and a good message. Uh, and... Uh, Get to lay hands on you and send you off to Washington, uh, where you belong now. So, Amen. Um, but uh, first of all, I want to want you to share your testimony of how you came to know the Lord. Okay. Well, I was uh, blessed to be able to grow up in a Christian home. My dad has been a pastor for most of my life, and uh, I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior at the age of six. Um, I, it was a Sunday in two thousand and one. Don't remember the exact <laughs> date, but I can remember just. Like it was yesterday, uh, going into church and listening to the message. And I honestly couldn't tell you what the message was about. But I knew by the end of it that if I died at that moment, that I was going to split hell wide open. And so I can remember after the end of the message, I went up to my dad and I was bawling my eyes out. Just saying, I need to get saved. I need to get saved. So he took me back to, uh, we had the piano and there's a little space behind it. And he took me back there and explained the gospel to me. And as a six-year-old boy, I uh, prayed right then and there to receive Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. And it was the best decision I ever made in my life. Amen, for sure. And, uh, you know, often you hear people talk about, you know, being saved at different ages. And uh, the the name of this little interview series we do is called The Difference. Mm -hmm. And so talk about that difference that Jesus made in your life, even at six years old. Well, um, of course, even growing up in church, even being six years old, I was still as wicked and vile as anyone else. Now, maybe in the eyes of the world, someone would look and say, oh, you're as bad as someone that did drugs or alcohol or immorality or any of that, those type of things. But I was still a sinner before God. Um, I was still just as guilty. I still would have gone to hell in my sins if, without Jesus Christ. And, you know, one way I look at it is, you know, maybe the Lord uh, didn't save me out of a life of all those types of things that the world would look and say, that's terrible. But he saved me from going into those things. Because I know if I would not have Jesus Christ in my life, my life would be a mess. I know I'd be out doing those things, being involved in those types of things. And so the difference, I guess, he made in my life um, would be my future. You know, the, the, the difference in my future of what could have been in my life and what it is now. And so I'm thankful I got saved. I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit that, that just uh, helped me to grow as a Christian. For godly parents that taught me the right thing uh, to walk with God. Um, and he gets all the glory and honor and praise. That's why, you know, praise the Lord for just what he's done in my life, being able to be ordained now, uh, being in the ministry, all that kind of stuff. And, and that's the difference, and it comes from accepting Christ as your Savior. It comes Amen. as him dwelling inside you and his power and his strength. Like I said, I can't stress enough. It's not me. I'm not anything special or anything better than anyone else. Uh, but I can honestly say to God be the glory. I've always lived my life the best way I know how to, to please the Lord Jesus Christ and to do what he wants me to do and put him first in my life. Amen. And it definitely does make a difference. Um, you know, the Word of God is quick and powerful. And so whenever you get God's Word inside you, whenever you walk with God uh, and walk in the Spirit, it, it, it changes you. It makes you different. And so that, that's the difference that. the Lord's made in my life, and I'm very thankful for that. Yeah. And uh, I met you, I think I figured it out, it was around 2013. Because okay. I believe that's the year you graduated. Mm-hmm. I met you at a, at a ping pong table or something like that. <laughs> at a ping pong table. At, uh, at some youth, uh, yeah. um, youth thing. I almost said Youth of Blaze, that's in New York. March Madness. March Madness. Uh, down in Lee Trobe. And uh, I think after that, you invited me to your graduation. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of how we've been friends ever since. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's been a blessing to know you. Mm-hmm. And I, say that, too. I say this not, uh, I almost make it sound like, yeah, it was good to know him back, you know, <laughs> until he disappeared and was never seen again. But uh, I'm sure we'll still keep in contact, right? We'll still yep. keep in contact. We still will. We still definitely. <laughs> definitely. But, uh, and uh, it has been an encouragement to get to know you because. Um, there were some times, as those of you who followed my channel for a long period of time know, I've been in a lot of health issues, uh, and Brother Aaron has, has been a friend who's helped me, visited me, called me, uh, you know, all those different things, even helped me with some songs we wrote together, yeah. and sung a lot together, mm-hmm. and uh, so that's, a, that's another thing, is that when God saves you, He not only makes a difference in your life, but He uses your life mm-hmm. to make a difference in somebody else's life, mm-hmm. and that's what I'm thankful for. Um, real quick before we close, tell us how you got called into the ministry. Well, um, at the age of 13 is when the Lord called me to preach. I can remember it was at a uh, revival meeting. Uh, I believe, where was it at? It was at Bible Baptist, I believe they had a revival meeting. Okay. And uh, I just remember 
during the service, the Lord impressed on my heart that that's what he wanted me to do, called call to preach, called to just serve the Lord with my life. And so that's honestly, ever since then, what my focus and my desire is to be in. Um, I never really focused on trying to have some type of secular career or job or make a bunch of money or have a fancy house or fancy car. It's always been just serving the Lord, uh, really in whatever way he wanted me to. And uh, that's always been my dream and desire is to be full-time in the ministry. And in a sense, you're always full-time in the ministry no matter always, what. Yeah, you, know, you, you always need to be serving the Lord no matter <laughs> what. Um, but that's just, he put that in my heart, and that's desire. And pray to the Lord uh, for a, a dad and a pastor that's taught me, that's trained me, that's shown me how to do things the right way. I've been blessed to be able to travel around to meetings and meet a bunch of different types of people, uh, pastors and men of God. And, and see the Lord use them and see the power of God in their life. And that's been a challenge and a help to me to, to want what they have Amen. and to uh, you know, want to be used of the Lord to, to change other people's lives and to make a difference in their life. And so I'm... Uh, have a good night. You too. So are you too. Um, and so uh, that's, uh, you know, I, I think it just puts that desire in my heart. And, and, and you know, a verse I go back to, uh, not first, but a couple of verses, but about Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. uh, when he um, said about he was ready to quit and give up and oh, yes. toss everything away, but he said there was just a fire burning inside him, and he could not contain. And uh, that's a lot of times, you know, I, I believe what the Lord's done in my life. Just put that, that fire inside you, like, hey, someone's got to preach, someone's got to win people for the Lord, someone's got to encourage Christians. And it hasn't always been easy, and uh, of course, many times I'm like, Lord, why in the world am I in this, and why did you call me to do this? You know, I, there's a yeah. lot better people than I am, and all that kind of stuff, right. but uh, the Lord's been faithful, and, and I think of the verse that, uh, you know, where Paul says, uh, the Lord counted me faithful putting me into the ministry. And that's a great Amen. honor and privilege. And he gets the glory for that, that he's given me the grace uh, and the ability to be faithful. Yeah. And so that's kind of a little Well, bit. And, and tonight when I was actually uh, sort of testifying about our friendship and things like that, um, I noticed somebody else shared some scripture. I didn't, I, I totally forgot about it. But I, uh, after, after the fact, I remembered the verse that settled my heart in the ministry which is Philippians 1, 6, being confident in this very thing, mm -hmm. they which have begun a good work in you will perform it in the day of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. And I, I believe that. That's what's kept me in the ministry, has Amen. been that faith that God's going to continue Amen. to perform what he, what he promised. And I believe that for you too, Amen. brother. And, I and that. going along with that, uh, references escaping me once again, <laughs> but um, I think it's in Thessalonians maybe. Where it says about faithful is he that calleth you, who also, also will do, do it. it. And that's, yes, that's one thing that I very often... Uh, very often um, hold to the Lord. And when I pray before I preach, when I'm praying, you know, getting ready for preaching and all that kind of stuff, studying, is that, Lord, you're the one that called me to do this. You're yeah. the one that put this burden on my heart. This is what you want in my life. So, God, if you're the one that called me, you're the one that's going to have to perform it in me. You're going to have to be yeah. the one to give me the power to make a difference. Because I know I'm nothing. I'm a nobody. I can't change anyone's life. I can't make a difference. But the Lord Jesus Christ can. Exactly. And so that's one thing I've held to the Lord of his promise of, hey, God, you called me. So now you're going to have to be the one to do it. He's proven himself faithful time and time and, again. And, that, and that's the purpose of, of why we do these videos is because if you are saved, understand that God is able to use anybody. No matter who you are, God is able to use anybody in any capacity. If God wants you to do something, he's going to make sure that happens. But most importantly, if you're not saved, if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we use all these different examples, all these different testimonies to show you that God can change anybody's life, whether it be a church kid or somebody who would never step... Uh, you know, foot in a door their entire life, and then one day, after you know so many years of living for themselves, came to realize their need for the Savior. And uh, so that's what we try to accomplish in this: is if you're not saved, understand that that God loves you. Mm -hmm. And if you uh, repent of your sins, if God convicts you of your sin, you repent of your sins and trust Him as your Lord and Savior, uh, that He can make that difference in your life. So, mm -hmm. Brother Aaron, I want to thank you for coming on. Mm -hmm. My pleasure. And uh, we're definitely praying for you. Should you take buddy. this? Uh, next step in your life going to Washington. Mm -hmm. So you have any final words before we close? Just stay faithful to the Lord. Stay faithful to Him, and He's always faithful to us. And there's nothing better than serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, verse the Lord's really used to help me and been encouragement to my life is uh, Lamentations 3.25, that the Lord is good unto them that seek Him. Uh, the Lord is good to them that wait for Him, to the soul that seeketh Him. Amen. And uh, that's one thing I've found to be true, that just wait on the Lord and... Uh, he provides, and He provides in more amazing ways than you could ever think or believe. So God's good. All glory be to Jesus Christ because He's the one that deserves it. Amen. All right. Well, with that, we're going to close this. <coughs> Excuse me. And we want to thank you for watching, and you have a great day.